the final score, Coventry City 3, Wrexham 4. And before we go on, I just want to say thank you, Rob McElhenney. Thank you, Ryan Reynolds. Because this club has done amazing things before. We, we have had fabulous cup days, remarkable away days like this. But it's been so long. And to experience this at the club again it is remarkable and fabulous. And I just hope when we think of that iconic comment that Rob said about seeing faces he recognised in the crowds when Wrexham celebrated in 1978, our greatest ever season, I love the notion that he'll have watched the footage and Ryan will have watched the footage and again, they will have recognised people in that crowd and understood that the fantastic things that are happening in terms of what we're doing on the pitch, the amazing boost to the community off the pitch, and I mean the, both the community of the city and the community of football supporters around the club, and the way that we've met so many more wonderful people who have enriched our support of Wrexham uh, is something that can't be quantified. It really can't. This was a game for the ages. It was fabulous. And it's the start, as was rightly said <laughs> by Rob on Twitter, of the journey, not the conclusion. So, Wrexham anyway, third round tie against Coventry. And, well, all eyes myself included, were on the Coventry team sheet to see how strong they go. The Coventry local papers seemed to be informed and suggested that they would rotate quite heavily and leave a lot of players out. They didn't. They picked a strong side. In fact, I'll address this now. Uh, quite a lot of the Coventry press, uh, who were great, by the way, I'm not being critical, afterwards did say, ah, but if we'd picked our proper team. I mean, that was a strong side. Their keeper was the backup keeper, but he started the season as first choice and lost his place. Um, so at the start of the year, he was their first keeper. The three centre-backs were the same as played in their last league game. The right wing-back was a player of the season a couple of years ago. The left wing-back uh, played on the, in their last league game. The two central midfielders were different, but Sheaf, who had a very good game, I thought, uh, played a couple of matches ago, and the other one is their captain, who admittedly hasn't started a game this season, but nonetheless, obviously, is not a, a download in the down, download? A downgrade in terms of form. If you can hear banging in the backgrounds, I have two cats prowling around behind my laptop. Um, and then Palmer behind the strikers played in the last match, and obviously his class, as we saw in the game, the Waghorn up front also played in the last match, and alongside him was Fabio Tabarez, a promising young striker that, you know, the Coventry fans were very eager to see given an opportunity. And he got injured, which meant that Victor Jukarez, the, the, the big player they missed out, really, uh, came on during the first half. So, although they did improve when they brought more players on off the bench... I'm reluctant to go along with the idea that this was an understrength Coventry side, especially because Wrexham rotated, surprisingly. Aaron Hayden was missing, although that was because he had a tight hamstring and there's a league game on Tuesday. I think, my understanding, we could have risked it, but the league game took precedence, which is quite right, I think, um, especially as Max Clueth was available to come in and had a superb game. And also, we genuinely rotated that right back. Anthony Ford's come back from injury. They gave him a break and gave Reese Hall Johnson only his second start of the season. And Ollie Palmer was on the bench. It was Sam Dolby up front. So, you know, let, let, let's not pretend that this was a, a weak Coventry side who underestimated us. That's not the scenario we walked into. The scenario we did walk into was one of Wrexham being positive on the front foot straight away and looking to dominate, and it was brilliant to see. An excellent start by Wrexham. The whole game was played at a ludicrous tempo, and Wrexham were the sides who were causing early issues. Uh, however, the first chance of the game fell from a set-piece to Coventry. Now, Casey Palmer's delivery from set-pieces was excellent throughout. He swept a nasty ball into the goal mouth from the right flank. Howard came for it and then decided he couldn't make it and was rather stranded and rose from a very close range but a very tight angle, couldn't control his finish and put it over. Wrexham would make him pay. 
because in the 12th minute they got the goal that frankly they deserved and it was a lovely goal as well Tom O'Connor switching play intelligently over to the right hand side Hall Johnson had his man isolated laid it back first time though because that man had to stick with him and block his par forwards to Young who had lots of space to take a touch and then swing in a typical excellent cross in to the penalty spot area Sam Dolby got up brilliantly between two defenders and planted an excellent header back across the keeper and inside the right post. This is a big game for Dolby, wasn't it? Let's be honest. He needed to show what he could do on a big occasion and he rose to the occasion quite literally with that goal. Coventry came back at us and really the pattern of the first half was that Wrexham were excellent. Mark Robbins did say afterwards, the Coventry manager, he'd never felt so embarrassed as during the first hour of the match. But... Coventry are a championship type team. They do have quality and they looked like they had a goal in them all through the first half, even though Wrexham were the better team. And they came terribly close to scoring four minutes after Dolby's opener, free kick given in a central position after Dolby had tracked back and committed a, a cynical foul, but a necessary one because Coventry had opened Wrexham up. And from the free kick, Palmer stepped up and hit a beauty over the ball which slammed against the left post and ricocheted clear. It was painful for Coventry because two minutes later, Wrexham were two goals up. Long ball down the left, McFadgen popped it back nicely to Elliot Lee on the left flank. And what he did next was either genius or a stroke of luck. Or, or maybe we should say something in between. A player putting a ball into a dangerous area and, you know, earning his luck. That whole um, Ben Hogan quote, isn't it? Where a player playing golf against him says, why are you so lucky? And he said, it's funny, the more I practice, the luckier I get. Well, Lee certainly ripped in a glorious ball from the left-hand side. I'm, I I think he's picking out Mullen at the far post, I'm certain of it. But <clears throat> it's too close to the goal, beautifully too close to the goal, and it curls around the goalkeeper more and inside the right post. And Wrexham two goals up. Wow. Remarkable scenes amongst the four and a half thousand supporters. Incredible support uh, for Wrexham. Coventry looked again to come back again. Palmer was clever. He'd drop off between the lines. Just find those little bits of space. He cutely helped the ball onto Waghorn. And he drove the ball in. Howard did well to get down low. And just pushed the ball away wide. It wasn't a good day for goalkeepers. It was a very wet, skinny surface. Then at the other end, Wrexham came forwards. Dolby, well, and particularly Luke Young, actually, more than Dolby, had a shout for a penalty when Rose came in from behind. It was a bit of a clumsy tackle, but, I mean, having looked at it again, the ref's quite right not to give the penalty. It may even have been slightly outside the box. Then Wrexham had a nervous moment. 25th minute, Sheaf driving the ball in, shot which is going inside the left post. Howard got across comfortably enough, got his body behind it, but had spilled it wide. Wrexham were relieved that the playing over from the rebound was offside. It was, like I said, a, a tricky surface for him, so maybe he was just playing it safe. But, yeah, Wrexham were, were starting to look like a team that could concede at this point. Like I said, Coventry were looking good. I'm, I'm starting to work, Howard. Uh, Wrexham, though, at the other end, was still threatening. Lovely play again between Young and Hall Johnson. Ended in Hall Johnson playing a cute little pass to O'Connor, finding him in space 20 yards out, just right of centre, and he tried a curler which shouldn't come down in time before, well, a key moment which really helped Coventry out. The 33rd minute, a really good break by them. Waghorn feeding an excellent ball round the outside of Tavares, who was running at the last defender. He's an incredibly quick player. And the way the pass was played, Tavares was going to get there first and use his pace and would have been one-on-one -on -one with Howard. But his first touch was very heavy and he went to ground. And it turned out the poor guy, starting only his second game of the season, had ruptured his Achilles, a horrible long-term injury for him. So he had to be taken off and it meant that Coventry, contrary to their plans had to send on their superstar, Victor Gukarez, first player in the championship to get to double figures this season and apparently a target of some Premier League teams during the January window. And within two minutes, they'd pulled back a goal, although it must be said it uh, didn't owe much to Gukarez. For McFadgen, putting the pressure on a halfway line, made a poor decision, really. He rather ran into trouble when I think he should have just taken a conservative option 
gone backwards and just tried to pass it back to a player with a bit more time. He was caught out. Palmer broke down the right-hand side, stood a ball up to the far post, which was a bit floaty and was a bit behind Waghorn, but both he and Clueth were expecting something in their, in their path, and they both had to stop, were both a little off balance. Waghorn did really well to poke a foot and just tore it down to Sheaf, who smashed it with power from inside the box, straight down the middle. It beat Howard. We, you might ask if Howard maybe should have been a little more central, but nonetheless, I mean, it was a close-range, clean strike, and Coventry had pulled one back. Wrexham responded straight from the kickoff, though. Hall Johnson on the right with his weaker foot, ripping in a hell of a cross, looking for Mullen. This really was a cross, not a shot. Um, and it nearly found Mullen. Moore lunged and just at full stretch, managed to dive and palm the ball behind for a corner. Otherwise, Mullen would have nodded it into an empty net. Moments later, though, Wrexham had another chance, which nearly ended with Coventry getting an equaliser. Toza with the first of a series of long throws that would cause Coventry problems. Thrown into the six-yard box, poor header away, Young attacking it, got their first eight yards out, but the defender who was attacking it, well, was only a, a fraction behind Young, and it was almost inevitable, although Young got really got hold of the shot, that his shot was blocked by that defender. It ricocheted out, and there was a breakaway a sharp breakaway for Coventry, which started off when the ball was cleared to Yukariz, who barged into Hall Johnson. At the time, I must be honest, I thought it might be a foul, but it wasn't, looking at the replay again. It was good, strong play by him, and suddenly Wrexham were wide open at the back. Yukariz played a smart ball into the edge of the D. Kelly, with an excellent back heel, released Waghorn on the right side of the box. He drove it in. Howard managed to get his legs behind it and push it into the goal mouth. McFadgen ran across to shield it so that Howard could recover and grab hold of it. I think maybe McFadgen might have been wiser to just try and get rid of it, although he was, to be fair, facing his own goal in the centre of the six-yard box. And Howard had to get up, try to lunge, and rather pushed it away rather than grabbing it as a Coventry player approached. Luckily for Exum, Toza picked up the loose ball and was able to lash it away to safety. Wrexham then had a, a complaint when Mullen was blocked off, off the ball by Rose. Uh, referee was uninterested in it, and I think rightly having looked at it again. Uh, but Wrexham were, were starting to have to dig in at the end of the half. Palmer, again between the lines, allowed to turn, played a cute little scoop pass into the right channel. Sheaf running onto it, threatening to get his second goal inside eight minutes. But a combination of McFadgen and Howard did well to converge on him and somehow squeeze the ball behind for a corner. Seven added minutes were shown. And it's got to be said, that felt like a, a, a hell of an eternity. There, should, there clearly should have been some... A decent amount added on. Seven seemed excessive, and with Wrexham suddenly having to dig in during Coventry's best spell of the first half, it was worrying. But added time was navigated pretty comfortably, and then in the seventh minute of added time, Wrexham struck again. Again, a toes of throw that wasn't dealt with. He hurled it into the near post. It was clear to the edge of the area. Young put it back in where it came from. Dolby headed it cutely across the goal, and O'Connor was there attacking it at the far post with a lovely, perfectly judged header back across the keeper who was just shuffling around across to him and he had no chance as the header nestled inside the far post. A great finish by O'Connor. Seems to enjoy scoring goals on the road. And Wrexham were 3-1 up. The fans were in ecstasy at half-time and Coventry had a lot of work to do. The second half, well, the first 15 minutes or so had a different pattern really to the rest of the game. Coventry got themselves on top, but Wrexham defended comfortably. So although Coventry, like I said, were, were controlling midfield really for the first time, their chances had come more when they were breaking on Wrexham, when Wrexham left it a bit open at the back, Wrexham defensive block looked sound. We didn't drop too deep and it just looked like it was a comfortable 15 minutes. You'd think just what you want, wouldn't you? So we get to the 57th minute, 
and Wrexham was still 3-1 up and you're now thinking, OK, the pressure's building on Coventry here. And then the pressure built enormously on Coventry because Wrexham won another throw. Again, it wasn't dealt with well. Toza hurls it in. It drops loose. Clueth in the same sort of position that Young profited upon twice, once at that block shot and once when he set up the O'Connor goal. Latches onto it. It's a really great chance and he nails it. Panzo, standing on the edge of the six-yard box, makes a big save. Arms outstretched. Hits his right arm. The keeper is beaten. There's no one on the line. And the referee rightly gives a penalty and also sends Jonathan Panzo off. I, I have some sympathy for Panzo. It's definitely a penalty. There's no arguments about that. Really, you, you, it's a straight red card if it's a deliberate handball. Uh, so... I'm not convinced it was deliberate, but then I suppose his body shape maybe implies he's hoping he'll hit his hand and the ref will say, oh, well, your hand was just happened to be there. But anyway, he was off. Coventry down to 10 men. Mullen steps up, slots it past the keeper. And now Wrexham are 4-1 up against 10 men in the 58th minute. The tie's over. It's all done. There's nothing to see, unless you want to see a non-league team score five or six goals at a championship team's ground, eh? <laughs> no. Unfortunately not. And... I've waited to say this. Huge credit to Coventry. You wouldn't expect that. You lose to a National League team at home with a decent, strong team. Huge credit to Coventry, not just as a team, but as a club. Their fans did not give up on them. And they made terrific noise. They really backed them. It was magnificent. I mean, how many clubs' fans would do that? 4-1 down at home with 10 men against a team from three divisions lower. But their fans really turned up the volume. It was utterly magnificent to see. Mark Robbins made attacking substitutions. They went at us, and incredibly, the 10 men completely dominated us. Although I will say in the early periods of the, of the 10 against 9, 11 game, we did carve out some decent half chances. But anyway, straight from the restart, Yukarez is shouting for a penalty. It isn't a penalty. Ball knocked into the box. Hall Johnson goes shoulder to shoulder with him. Yukarez rather invites the contact so he can ask for the foul. It isn't a penalty. And then Wrexham go up the other end and very nearly get the fifth. Again, it's a long throw from Toza. It's flicked on. Mullen meets it about 15 yards out with a great strike through a crowd. And Moore saves it. <laughs> I... He showed good reflexes to react to the fact that the ball was coming at him from pretty close range. It was going like a rocket and he was unsighted. But he was lucky, frankly, because he all he could do was just get his hands to it. He had no control over anything. And if Mullen had put it a foot either side of him, I don't think he'd even seen it. So an incredibly close shave for Coventry. And Wrexham continued a wonderful passage of play by Tom O'Connor, who seemed to be fouled facing his own goal in midfield. But carried on, turned, nutmegged his man, and then ripped a glorious pass to pick out Mullen, running at speed at the last defender, an outstanding tackle by Bidwell, or Mullen would have been one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Glorious stuff, that. And then Mullen threatened again to run in behind, picking the ball from a short throw on the left, flicking past Rose, and Rose hitting him pretty hard. The ref didn't give a foul. I must admit, at the time I thought it was, looking at the replays, I'm not so convinced. Um, it must be said, though, that Tom Neal, the ref, gave Mullen virtually nothing. He really didn't help him much at all. Uh, Mullen was a little wound up by this and chased around when, uh, the ball once it wasn't given. and He did look a bit maybe hot-headed. Although, to be fair, his chasing was very good. He didn't do anything daft. And, well, all I can say is a, a text was exchanged between the bench and... <laughs> A different part of the ground to check he had been booked and once it was confirmed he would be replaced by Ollie Palmer I think sensibly just in case Mullen did something and got himself a suspension having been on a yellow card already just before then actually Coventry again came incredibly close the ball coming into the box from the right McFadgen heading a clear but only as far as Palmer who looked to place it and the way nonchalantly struck it nonchalantly struck it I'll be honest uh, rather deceived me <laughs> but he just side footed it beautifully lovely placement hit the right post and bounced away second time Palmer had hit the post Wrexham wouldn't hang on for much longer though the second Coventry goal which had obviously 
change the complexion of the game came in the 69th minute and again McFadden won't be too happy about it the ball was played in he got there first running towards his own goal he claimed that Casey Palmer had fouled him from behind and went to ground the ref didn't give it one of those I think I don't think it was a foul if I'm honest with you but one of those the referees often give just because they don't want to have a controversial moment well this ref didn't do that and Yucarez was in two on one against Howard and squared it as my Van Palmer was he squared it and Yucarez drove it home Howard actually nearly made a fabulous save lunging across he got a, a hand to it but it would have been a remarkable save had he pulled that one off and it was 3-2 with 14 minutes left the changes were taking effect. Now Hamer was on in midfield and he looked class. He swept a glorious ball to the far post for Kane. And Kane... I beg you, I just missed the goal, lads. I beg your pardon. Uh, four minutes after that goal, McFadgen comes off, which I think was understandable. He did some good things, but he was having problems defensively. McAlinden comes on in his place. And the problem was, of course, that McAlinden's very much an attacking player. And he also found it tricky when he was run at by Todd Kane, the, the substitute who was fresh, who'd come on to replace uh, the player who was running at uh, McFadden beforehand, Dabo, and he had a decent game as well. Um, and in the 76th minute, it was 4-3. A free kick given, which at the time we were furious about and Wrexham were furious about. Casey Palmer caught by Luke Young on the edge of the D. At first look, it looked like a foul got, should have been given the other way. But having looked at the replay, yeah, Young goes in and misses the ball and catches Palmer and then Palmer catches Young afterwards so definitely a good call by the referee and Palmer stepped in and ripped an excellent free kick into the net a few people have criticised Howard for this I've had a few looks at it I feel sorry for Howard I think really it's it's dead centre on the edge of the day so there's a big wall you know it's sort of keeper's choice which side's the keeper's side really and you've got to try and trust your wall so once Palmer gets it over the wall skimming over the wall at pace Howard didn't really move it. I don't think there's much you can do about that. If you gamble behind the wall, you're going to look a real fool if Palmer hits it keeper's side. So 14 minutes left, 4-3, massive momentum in Coventry's favour. And you think, well, Wrexham are not going to hang on to this. This is remarkable. I've been played so well. Two minutes after that, Hamer, as I said, in the instance I accidentally previewed a moment ago, picked it up deep, swept a great ball to the far post. Kane gets goal side of McAlinden. And from close range on the right-hand side, tries to square a volley to Yukarez, who's got an open goal tapping. Great work by Howard, who goes down and manages to parry it away from danger. But Connors just kept piling it on, and Wrexham were looking a bit tired and a bit panicky, if I'm perfectly honest with you. Uh, players just hacking it anywhere in the box, not quite aware of what's going on around them. It was a little bit disconcerting. You've got to remember, we are playing against a very, very good team, so you can understand it. With nine minutes left, double change was made. Hall Johnson had gone down with cramp again. And so Ford came on to replace him. James Jones came on to give legs in midfield, replacing Lee. And a minute later, could have been, I'd argue maybe should have been, 11 against nine. Young receiving the ball on the right-hand side and Bidwell lunging. Well, to beg your pardon, not that at all. Young, Bidwell got the ball back from a throw-in he'd taken. Overhit the ball forwards and did that classic thing players do when they overhit it and they're committed. He jumped in to get it back, went over the ball, studs up, followed through, and went right through Young standing leg. Uh, I've got to be honest, he got a yellow. I think it was a red. I wonder if it would have been a red if they weren't already down to 10 men. Um, but Bidwell was incredibly lucky to stay on the pitch for that challenge. And as a result, Coventry were able to make life very, very scary for Wrexham as they continued to push on. Seven minutes left. Yucker is pulling the ball down the right-hand side. Rose standing across up to the far post. There's a terrific goal mouth scramble. At the start of which Toza looked like he was fouled, but nothing given. And then Allen, stretching beyond his man, managed to get a touch to it and divert it goalwards without much power. But still, Howard has to be sharp to use his feet to get across the, the goal and dive, smother the ball as it was about to cross the line. 84th minute. Yukarez manages to isolate Toza down the right channel, pins him and does well to beat him, drives into the box, smashes a shot in towards the top right corner, brilliant save by Howard, who stands up well and manages to get his hand onto it and push it onto the post. We got to 90 minutes, still 4-3. Again, it's seven added minutes. Again, there should be quite a bit of stoppage time. 
but it felt a little excessive. The referee, I think, had taken against Wrexham's time-wasting, which, to my eyes, they are biased eyes, remember, felt to me like, you know, not, not excessive, really. But anyway, the ref didn't like it. He added seven minutes on. 90 plus one minutes. And Bidwell is sweeping a ball in to the far post. It ricochets to Kane. 15 yards out, he seems possibly to use his hand to control it, but the ref doesn't give it, and he drills a powerful shot. Toza makes a magnificent lunge to deflect the ball narrowly over the bar. Very close thing. Wrexham, furious the handball wasn't given. Then a long-launched ball, two minutes later, puts Kluwer under real trouble. Yukarez manages to nudge the ball beyond him, but Howard is quick off the line and just about gets there ahead of the prolific striker. Again, 90 plus four minutes. Palmer, Casey Palmer, in the area 25 yards out where he was creating so much, feeds a nice ball to Kane. Lovely return pass into the goal mouth. Palmer's got a clear sight of goal six yards out. Maybe he should have hit it with his right foot, but it just arrived on his left foot for the, the you know, just, just the way that he'd arrived. That was how his stride. And falling backwards, he manages to put it over the bar from six yards out. A glorious, glorious opportunity. And he knew it as he stayed on the turf for ages, thinking about what had happened. But there would be one more moment of danger. 90 plus 7 minutes. A corner's given on the left-hand side. The goalkeeper Moore comes up to make a nuisance of himself. The ball is swung under the bar. It's a poor corner. Howard can catch it. But that edginess that was in Wrexham's defence spreads to him. And he just pours it right down into the ground nearly gets it straight to the goalkeeper more to tap in an equaliser into an open goal but it's just out of his reach bounces up in the air Wrexham half clear it the ball's launched back into the box and Howard does well this time attacking it coming a long way out catching it and essentially concluding the game when he knocks it up the pitch Wrexham win a free kick and after a consultation with the referee James Jones just boots it down the line and the referee blows the final whistle and cue scenes of remarkable celebration. But like I said, it was an incredible cup tie. Both guys could have scored five or six easily. And somehow Wrexham emerged with a narrow victory. Somehow because in that last half hour, and especially when there were 12 minutes left plus seven added, and Coventry only won behind, how did we hang on to it? But also remarkable because how was it a narrow victory? 4-1 <laughs> up against 10 men and we played gloriously and let's not forget that although that conclusion was remarkable and heart-stopping the first hour was utterly magnificent. Wrexham were the better side, dominated and when they were put under pressure defended comfortably as well. Co massive credit like I said to Coventry with 10 men went for it and who had the unequivocal support of their fans who made terrific noise in a brilliantly noisy atmosphere wow right let's go through how the heroes did shall we and um, howard had a couple of nervous moments but let's look at some of the others as well that save that he pushed onto the post was a massive one the block he made when kane tried to square as a yucker is who had an open goal four yards out was crucial he did really well on a number of occasions. Twice he came off his line quickly to smother. He did look a little bit edgy at times, but he also had some moments where his decision-making was spot on. And with his reflexes, you can't complain. You know, when he does sort of don't have time to think, instant reactive moments he's, he's very good at. The centre-backs were superb. I've got a single out Clueth, who's only played one game in for weeks. And that was in the trophy. He looked a little rusty the first 10 minutes. And I felt a little concerned that having to be thrown into a game of this magnitude might be a problem for him. How wrong I was. From the rest of the game, he was imperious. He won everything in the air. And the thing I really want to point out is, Yukarez, when they brought him on, it was absolute class. I mean, you could see he is a player who, you know, his current Swedish international big teams are looking at him and you could see it he made a huge difference when he came on but not when he was up against Clueth that one incident near the end where Clueth was troubled by an awkward high bouncing ball and Howard was able to get off the line and help him out that was the only time I felt that Yucarez really got the better of him 
uh, Kluwerth just got very tight on him straight away and constantly forced Jokeris to, to knock the ball backwards because he, he tried a couple of times to turn him and Kluwerth was strong enough to resist. Uh, magnificent performance by Kluwerth. Likewise, Toza as well, and likewise, Tunnicliffe, who both did exactly what you want to see. Two big, experienced centre-backs who defended their penalty areas superbly. Big credit as well to Hall Johnson, who couldn't make the whole 19, and that was always going to be the risk. Uh, it was a hell of a risk picking him, but he did do well defensively. They were constantly trying to play balls inside him and inside McFadgen, sometimes with success, but to be fair, I think that's more to do with the way we set ourselves up than any shortcomings by them and Hall Johnson put some decent balls into the box as well so credit to him I mean he's looking more and more ready to roll in the league now thankfully McFadden had a strange sort of game of course he had some good moments going forward he had some good defensive moments as well made some good tackles but Darbo's pace caused him an issue and so did Kane um, and he did make mistakes which essentially led to the two goals so yeah, McFadgen probably will be disappointed overall. Um, but again, we have to remember, he's playing against players from the top of the championship. And I think that is an important context to consider. Centre mid, well, the midfield did ever so well. O'Connor was quality. I mean, his tackling, his intercepting, his long passing, his short passing, he was tremendous. Um, he may feel that Casey Palmer, in the closing stages, got a bit of space in his sort of area. But by that point, Rex would drop quite deep and it wasn't so much O'Connor's area. We were more just defending the box and, and holding on in there. Um, but that's a, that's a quibble because his work on the ball was excellent. He scored as well, of course. Um, but uh, O'Connor is a class player and he's really showing it now. Elliot Lee, again, you know, maybe didn't get quite as many opportunities to show what he can really do uh, in terms of damage because he was playing against a good team, but he looked comfortable against them. He wants to take them on. That confidence is there. And he scored the goal. Whether he meant it or not, who cares? You strike the ball well like that, and you get your rewards. Fortune favours the brave. And Luke Young was man of the match. And that's a difficult choice, because there were so many excellent performances. But for me, I think it boiled down to him or Clueth. And Young was outstanding. I mean, from the very start, the first 10 minutes, he really set the tempo. That brilliant start by Wrexham constantly saw Young winning the ball, carrying the ball forwards, using the ball intelligently. He won so many tackles. He made one tackle in the second half when Howard had come out to the flank and cleared it, but hadn't got a huge amount of distance on it. And there was a danger that a shot could come in from distance or even just the ball played in towards the edge of the area before Howard could get between the sticks. Young snuffed that out with a magnificent tackle. He was just superb. He also won a crucial 50-50 on the edge of the area with Jokerez when the ball dropped loose, which if he hadn't won would have left Wrexham in trouble. But it's difficult to single out tackles by Young because there were so many of them and there were so many good ones. Brilliant performance by him. And then up front, well, let's let's focus on Dolby for a second. That's a hell of a move giving him that start. And, and you know, most people agree we probably want to bring another striker in. Uh, just to bolster the squad and round it off because we essentially have the three senior strikers so we needed to show something as well today it was a good show of faith in Parkinson to give him this opportunity and he lived up to it lovely header for the goal lovely header for the assist as well he worked his socks off he should have been probably subbed at the end he was so tired but we kept him on I would argue because we would probably need him for defensive set pieces because he's so good in the air um, and so he was shattered but he stayed on and dug deep and he left absolutely nothing in the changing room. He, he put everything out there. Brilliant effort. Mullen scored again. Um, he had a frustrating time. But I'd say that frustration was more to do with the referee than anything else. It would give him nothing. He got some quite rough handling. He particularly inconvenienced Rose, as did Palmer when he came on. But the ref just wasn't allowing him everything. Don't get me wrong. He and Palmer caused this problem for themselves because they do try and win free kicks a lot. And I think referees look at it and after a while get tired of it and say, oh, you're just playing for it all the time. I'm not giving you anything. But, you know, if you, there were a couple of cast iron fouls on him. He was unlucky. But he worked hard. His movement is always as good. He was always lively in and around the box. And he kept his cool and we had to slot the penalty away. The three subs came on to work. At the back, McAlinden had a bit of a rough time again because he's more of an attacking wing-back. He did take the ball up forwards a couple of times to relieve the pressure, um, but Kane was causing them issues defensively. In midfield, James Jones just came on to give legs. He was just working. <laughs> he didn't get a chance to do anything fancy. Just worked as he does. 
and that was important. And Palmer came on up front, did well in the air, wasn't quite able to link things up probably as he'd like to, but he was important at the back in terms of having height, and he wasn't able to link things up so much because he came on at pretty much the time when the game turned against us in terms of the momentum of it, and we weren't getting the ball forward soon enough. So, historic, magnificent, glorious. I still got the crowd ringing in my ears. That was such a treat. And it was brilliant to share this with our community as well, both old and new. The club's going places, and this was one of those memorable moments. And a chance for the new fans of Rob and Ryan to experience a Wrexham giant killing. And they're making it possible. Brilliant stuff. Bring on Sheffield United. With the final score of Coventry City 3, Wrexham 4. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC.